So every winter when we have to start using the heat, they start complaining about how the noise is keeping them up at night yep. and in turn keeps my wife and I up at sure. night. We've tried to put some pipe insulation on there. Nothing seems to work. Well, this is hydronic baseboard heating, and I've heard this complaint before. Great. I'm glad you're here to help. Well, hydronic baseboard is still used in many places in this country in the cold weather climates. Hydronic heating is a closed loop system. It starts with a boiler that's usually in the basement. The boiler heats up the water to 180 degrees, and then a circulator pump pushes that heated water through lengths of copper pipe to individual zones throughout the building. Once the supply line completes its run and the room is heated, the water has to circulate back to the boiler to be reheated. Depending on the layout of the house, the return line can be run directly back to the boiler, or it can return the way it came from, following the supply line inside the baseboard. Okay. All right, why don't you turn up the thermostat? Is it up here? Yes, it's in my room. All right, good. To a plumber, every sound means something. It might be a squeak or a bang or a We're almost like pipe whisperers. But every sound has a distinct reason. We just have to find it. Okay, the heat's on. All right, good. Be very, very quiet. A little ticking. A little more ticking. Ooh. That would wake up your son. Oh, yeah. I get it. All right, give me a hand pulling these covers. All right, good. So with all the covers off, you can actually get an idea of what, just what's going on here. Look at this. Here is the supply that comes up from the boiler in the basement up to the front hall. It comes along here. Now, the superheated water in this pipe Here's these fins, or the element, and that's going to heat up the air. Cool air comes in through the bottom. The superheated water gives up its heat to the air, comes out right here. Now, the pump is pushing the water along here. Now, look at this. There's no fins right here. And then it comes to here, and that pipe turns. There's plenty of room for expansion here. A little more heating element right here. But look at this now. Here's that supply line that continues into the next bedroom. But then, instead of going right back to the boiler, it actually returns and turns back this way. Now it comes here, and you don't even notice it, but it's, see this pipe tucked way up in oh, here? Oh, yeah. Come here. Look at this. It comes to this corner, and look at this. If you can feel in here, this pipe is actually so long that it's pushing against the outside wall. It's actually cracked the wall right there. What happens with copper pipe? As you heat it up, it, it expands. It gets longer. 50 feet of this copper pipe, if I raise it by 100 degrees, it wants to get longer by between a half an inch and an inch. Wow. So think about it. It's sitting here at rest. You turn the thermostat up. Now the pipe gets longer, and it's trying to push against your building. What we got to do is make this return pipe shorter. It's a simple matter of physics. All through the house, if we heat something up, it wants to expand. It wants to get bigger. If we let it cool down, it wants to contract, get smaller. Expansion and contraction. We just have to take it into account. All right, so here is your heating boiler right here. I've got the service switch off. I've turned the water feed off. And before we cut the pipe upstairs, I want to get the water out of the baseboard zone. So I've closed off all the other zones except for this one. And I've got a hose right here. And now we just got to let it drain a little bit. Now, I don't have to drain the whole heating system. I just have to drain it enough to get the water out of that top floor. I think I found the perfect spot to fix the noise issue. On the other side of this wall is your son's bedroom. You can see the two pipes that extend from his baseboard. And look at this. It continues over here. And in this corner, this is your master closet, you have the very same issue. And look at how it's actually pushed against the sheetrock and deformed it. Oh, wow. That's really expanded. So I think if we cut right here, we'll actually be able to fix not only the sound in your son's room, but here in your master bedroom. Really give both ends of that pipe a chance to expand. Great. I use an emery cloth to clean the outside of the pipe and the inside of the fitting. For tight spaces like this, I like to use this small tubing cutter called an imp. It allows me to get into really tight spaces. All right, Bart, I'm going to pull that return off the wall. Just give me a shout when it lines up with the supply pipe below it, OK? That's it. And that is how much we have to cut. I apply flux to the outside of the tube and the inside of the fitting. And now I'm ready to saw.
All right, our system is refilling. You can hear the water moving around a little bit. And now you can really see. Do you see how the return pipe is exactly in line with the supply pipe? And it turns out that that's the amount that the pipe was too long. But now with a cut, plenty of room for expansion. Great. Let's get all the covers back on. Sounds good. All right, this zone is back on, and this baseboard is piping hot. And what do you hear? Nothing. Exactly as it should be.